getting into the lesson of rest for the weary. I just want to read the scripture one more time just so we're clear on where we are. I'm starting at verse 28, Matthew 11, verse 28. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Starting with uh, verse 28, when I was looking at this verse specifically, um, I like that it starts off with an invitation, and not just an invitation to a few, but an invitation to all. Um, as it says, it says, come to me all who are weary and burdened. And I believe all of us at some point are put in a situation where we are we are weary, we are stressed out, we are burdened, we have such a, a burden upon us. It might be a responsibility, it might be a situation that we're going through in our life where it's just heavy on us. And God sends us, he begins with an invitation again. He's trying to invite us to know, okay, like, look, I'm trying to give you a, an opportunity to take that burden away from you, to take that weariness away from you. And I'm starting with an invitation. I'm starting with an invite. How humble is that? Like, even God, even Christ, who he don't need us, but he's still trying to invite us in because he sees that we are struggling, that there, there are things that's going on around us that are being pressured upon us, that are being um, pushed upon us, whether it might be uh, stress, discrimination, you know, persecution, you know, hate you know, distrust, discouragement, you know, all of these things, you know, are, can be considered burdens or weariness, um, beginning with verse 28. Um, and again, it's not just to a specific group, it's to everybody. So the God that I serve isn't one that just says, okay, you people over here, that's what I've come to save. Or you people over here, that's what I've come to save. I don't care if you black, blue, green, polka dot, whatever, you know, in the darkness of the light, whatever, like, I've come to save you all. Like, how inclusive is that? How how much of an embrace is that? But so often as a people, we want to just go specifically to a group of people that we're talking about. We might just want to go to this people or that people, and which is very divisive, you know. And it's not the... It's not the God that I serve. The God that I serve is more embrace of, of all people, you know, no matter what that is. Um, and so often we miss that message. Um, so again, he starts off with an invitation to all, not just a specific group. But all the people who are exhausted in their strength and are oppressed um, or are burdened. Like, so I think about today's standards, like people who are still being oppressed, people are still being... Um, put down, you know, people who we we associate with sometimes and we don't associate with sometimes. It might be, you know, the homosexual community. It might be still black males. You know, it might be, you know, people who are in the workplace of women. You know, it might be people in other countries being oppressed and discriminated against because of, you know, their skin color or their face or lack thereof, or whatever the case may be. It might be financial, because you don't fit in, I'm going to keep you down, I'm going to keep you, you know, oppressed. You know, there's so many fill-in-the-blanks, if you could, if you will, times where people just feel because of their situation, they are just getting this heavy burden up on them. And God's saying, like, I'm coming to take that off of you. Just try my, try my yoke. The world's yoke is going to put you down. Um, and it's one of those situations, I think, within the scriptures referencing during this time, they had a lot of, you know, rules and regulations that were kind of holding them down. And I'll kind of reference Matthew 23, um, verse 3 through 4. Um, I kind of want to highlight just to emphasize this verse. Um, if you go there with me again, Matthew 23, verse 3 through 4. It says, so you must obey, so you must obey them, do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. And right now we're talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We're talking about the religious leaders of the time. And during this time, they were putting 
a lot of rules and regulations upon the people, and it was very oppressive. It was very burdensome on them. And as I read further, it says, they tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. So you got a lot of people who saying a lot and talking a lot and putting a lot of on, putting a lot of emphasis and rules on people, but they're not walking it out themselves. I'm sure you know people like that. They, you know, always trying to put this this stress upon you, maybe using, you know, bending the scriptures or bending the words and making you feel stressed out, making you feel oppressed to keep you down. But you watch how they walk and they're not living it out themselves. That's very hypocritical. Um, so at this time, the Pharisees were, were putting, you know, by rules and regulations and, you know, kind of just by how they were characterizing themselves, they were just having people do things. And they were like, people are like, is this, is this really lining up with, you know, God's word? Is this really what God has, you know, you to be saying to me or, you know, leading me with? Um, and it wasn't lining up. And in Matthew 23, verse three through four, that's what it's saying. It's saying, you gotta, we have to listen to these people, but at the same time, we have to be obedient. But at the same time, we need to let the spirit guide us. Like, and you can't do that unless you're again, connected to God, connected to Christ in his word, knowing, being able to discern, you know, God's word. You know, we're supposed to be in a situation where we know his voice, we know his call. Um, and so when something doesn't quite line up, we need to be able to be spiritually discerning and say, mm, that's not lining up with Christ. You know, I respect what you're saying, but that's not lining up with Christ. Um, and to be able to do that in love and respect and boldness, you know, you have to have some confidence. And I believe I get that confidence from the word. I get that confidence from the spirit of God um, who gives me guidance, who gives me insight on what's going on. Um, so in those examples, we got to submit to our authorities. We have to submit to those who are above us. Um, but we have to let God's word, we have to let God's spirit, you know, guide us, you know, in those situations. In order to do that, we have to spend time with Christ. Um, so again, we start this off with the invitation. God starts this off with the invitation, you know, to us saying, I want to be able to shift these things, these burdens off of you. But you have to be able to, you know, receive it and, and listen to my spirit. Um, and those things. Um, specifically, you know, these verses give us confidence that all power and authority and judgment are in Christ, Christ's hands. Um, this is different from the garden. I'm thinking about the Garden of Eden. It says, because Adam had a direct relationship with the Father, because he sinned, the human race needs Christ to bridge that gap, to reconcile us back to our Father. So, in the garden, he had direct, you know, relationship with Christ, talk with God through the garden, walk with God through the garden. Um, but it seems during this time with the Pharisees and Sadducees, like they had to, these people felt like they had to go through, you know, the priest to get to God. And God's like, you know, Christ's like, uh-uh, like you can come directly to me. You know, you don't need to go to, you know, a priest to get these things. Like you have direct access to my word. You, I am the word. Um, and knowing that that gives a lot of confidence that I can just go direct. I can talk right to God. You know, I mean, we can't even talk directly to our president. We can't even talk directly sometimes to the pastors that are in our lives. You know, so many people kind of like as the middlemen, you know, that are, you know, the go-betweens, you know. We can go directly to God, who's the creator of all of that. And we can't even do that with the people on this earth. Like, we can't, I can't go down the street and talk to Obama. You know, I can't go down the street and talk to Michelle or... You know, some of you pastors, you, you know, you can't even, it's your church, you try to get to them, you got people kind of holding you back, or you're trying to get to your boss, you can't even get to that floor because you don't have the key to get to that floor, you know, you're not even on that level yet, you know. So many times, like, we're cut off from those sources of authority, but our God is saying, you can come directly to me, you have direct access to my love, my wisdom, all you got to do is submit to Christ, you got to believe um, in his death and resurrection, that we have direct access to that love. We have direct access to that wisdom um, and direct access to have those burdens taken away from us um, and try his burdens, try try his yoke, I mean, um, upon us because he states that it is easier, that it is a lighter um, situation. Um, and let's get into a little bit more. That was verse 28. 
going into verse 29, um, he has first asked us to come, and he has made a gracious promise. He next shows um, how, do we, how do we come to that and says we have to come by taking his yoke upon us. Taking on his yoke is a symbol of submission. So we got to submit to Christ. we got to submit to God and knowing and trust in him. Um, and sometimes that's a hard thing to do, to trust in God, to trust. But we know we have, we can reflect on countless situations where we trusted and submitted to God and he brought us through way better than what we were before. But how often we forget, we forget what God has done for us so quickly. We say, oh, God, I'm thankful for you. You know, you're bringing me through this situation, whatever. But so often, you know, five minutes after, ten minutes after, we're like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do in this situation? You know, and it's like, look, don't you just remember what I just did for you ten minutes ago? Don't you remember what I just did for you two seconds ago when I gave you breath? Don't you remember five seconds ago when I gave you that food just on your table that I provided for you with as far as income and job and love and all these other things that we can say that we take for granted throughout our day that God is providing for us. He's like, remember, reflect on those things. I'm going to take care of you, but you got to submit. We have to submit um, in order to get that type of situation where we can take on God's yoke and not the world's yoke. So the first thing, you got to submit to Christ. And then the second thing, we have to, in verse 29, we have to become his disciples. We had to We have to learn about him. We have to be his students. When I think about a disciple, I think about somebody who's constantly in the Word, who's studying to show themselves approved, to to be able to be guided by his Spirit, to be able to um, submit to his Word and submit to his Spirit. And it's not about themselves. It's all about his will. I mean, that's a hard thing to do consistently. I mean, it's easy for people to say, but I think that's a part of it. You know, if we're called to be Christ-like, the more and more I read my word, if we're called, if we are called to be Christ-like, it's a daily grind. It's a daily grind. So you got to be about your father's business. So it's not going to be this, oh, I'm just skipping through life and I'm picking the roses. It's going to be a battle. But people, most people like that. They like a challenge. They want to go up against something. They want to go up against the giants of the world. You know, They want to be able to let God use them um, and let God get the glory in those times. And it is a triumphant thing. But you got to learn about it. You got to you got to soak it up. You constantly have to be learning about Christ. You constantly have to be in that discipleship, um, in order to get all of those gifts that God has for you and me um, within our lives. Um, so that's more verse twenty nine, um, and just a little bit more specifically, it says, in order to accomplish this, we must be humble. We must humble ourselves and admit to dependency on Christ needing guidance, that we need guidance within our lives, that we need to be able to submit to his spirit, that we need guidance through the Holy Spirit, Um, that we are constantly putting ourselves in a situation where we are learning about Christ, that, that we must study to show ourselves approved, that we must get in our word, that we must research things, and that it must become a part of us, and that whether it's through our daily lives, that we're walking those things out. I think some of the, even as a teacher, when I was teaching, one of the best ways to show somebody or to teach somebody something is to model it. How are you modeling it out day by day throughout your life? How are you walking it out in your life? How can people see that Christ is in you? How can people see that the Spirit of God is in you? Um, In order to get to that point where um, you are submitting to that. People can see it. You know, even there's countless times in the Bible where somebody might see a man of God from afar or a woman of God from afar, and they can just see it coming off of God's Spirit is just on them. They can see it up on them. So can people see God's Spirit on you? Can people see within the, your daily walk how God is using you, um, how much confidence, you know, how much boldness is coming out of you um, for Christ's glory, for God's glory um, in your daily life. Um, and the more and more you learn, the more and more you study, for me, it gives you that peace that takes away that burden, that takes away that stress, that takes away the things that may be wearisome in your life because now you're trusting more. You have more confidence. You have the word to fight back um, upon that that stress, that um, dependency upon the worldly things that you don't need them anymore 
that you can trust in God and that he's going to provide for you no matter what the situation is. Uh, getting into verse 30, it says, The yoke that sin imposes is heavy, and bearing it brings not rest. So if you continue to rest upon the worldly things that compose a burdensome, you know, weight upon you, then you're going to have stress. You're going to be weary. You're going to be depressed. And you got to let those things go. You have to be able to give them over to God. You know, it might be um, a load of cheating. It might be lies. It might be stealing. It might be hate. You know, having those things and embracing those things, it brings stress into your life. You don't have any rest if you're out committing adultery. You don't have any rest in your life if you're out cheating. If you don't have any rest in your life, if you're lying to people, you're constantly having to make up another lie to get through to that lie. If you're stealing, you constantly have to be worrying about getting caught. If your hate is embodied in you, you don't have any rest because people don't want to be around you. You're constantly fighting and worrying about somebody trying to hurt you or whatnot. So why is it so easy to do those things then if we continue to do them? But in, not, in God saying... Try my try my yoke. Try my yoke. Why? Because it's easy. Well, why is it easy? Because it's born out of love. It's born out of something that is pure. It's born out of something that causes us to, to think beyond ourselves. It's not about us. That it's all about Christ. It's all about God. And since Christ is peace, since Christ is love, being connected to that, it gives us access to that peace. It gives us access to that love. So we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be burdened down by the stresses of life. We don't have to do these things that cause us distress, um, that we can rest in that and not be so worried about what's going on around us, that we can have peace and walk in God's word and not be trusting in what's going on within our own world, trusting in our own um, worldly intellect or worldly wisdom um, and that's a hard thing to do I mean it's, it's again it's, it's very easy to say but it's something that we must trust we must give over that um, that trust we must submit to his word um, so that those things that are weighing us down on a day to day basis or a weekly basis or a yearly basis we don't have to we don't have to keep those things upon us we can let those things go so that stress that you're getting from your job, God can take that away from you. That stress that you're getting from your relationship, whatever that relationship may be, God can take away from you. You know, that that worrisome, you know, that you have, you know, the spirit of fear that you may have, all those things can be taken from you. Again, but you must submit to his word. You must submit to his spirit. Um, and you'll have access to that peace. You'll have access to that love. You'll have access to that boldness and that courageousness that only comes from God um, and that isn't, um, it isn't limited. You know, you can, you can forever have it. I think the things of this world can give you happiness and peace for a moment, but they, it doesn't sustain you. It's not something that is going to be fruitful over the long haul. Um, and God definitely um, gives us things that are, are fruitful over the long haul. So just thinking about this, this message, just thinking about God's word in Matthew 11, um, 28 through 30, just something to dwell on. Um, again, something I just wanted to share um, because I feel like God is definitely, you know, um, trying to let us know that we don't have to live. We don't have to walk with those burdens anymore. We don't have to keep those burdens on our um on our shoulders that we need to take his his yoke that we need to take on his spirit that his his likeness his image um so that we can walk in peace that we can